Okay, so we've been looking at trigonometric ratios, but we've been looking at them in a very specific context of writing the trons. So, so far we've looked at sine being the ratio between the opposite and the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle, and cosine being the ratio, uh, the ratio between the adjacent and the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle, and the tangent ratio being the ratio between the opposite and the adjacent sides in a right angle triangle. <coughs> but we don't always have right angle triangles. It's been nice that we've been working with right angle triangles only, but sometimes we get triangles like this where we don't have a right angle in there. But we can still use trig ratios to understand parts of non-right angle triangles. <coughs> and we're going to learn about two rules, the sine rule and the cosine rule. Today we're going to learn the sine rule, we'll do the cosine rule next week. And we're going to see how we can still use our trig ratios, as I say, to figure out sides or angles of non-right angle triangles. But to do that, to actually prove why it works, we actually need to go back to right angle triangles to show that, because that's where, that's how we define trig ratios in the context of a right angle triangle. So how could we make, in this triangle, two right angle triangles? Cut in the middle. We certainly could. Yeah. And so I can say, all right, this looks so slightly at uh, angle at the bottom here, so it's going to come down to this, maybe. And now we've got two... <laughs> Right angle triangles. Now, whenever we do these kind of things, we actually need to kind of label and, and construct. And so, if we were doing this as a proof in a test, and you maybe ask to just prove what a sign rule works, you would say, I want to construct a line perpendicular, that means at right angles, a line perpendicular to AC through V. Alright, so I've got a line and I've, des I've described what that line is. It's got to be at right angles to the line AC and it's got to go to the point B. I should point out as well, I've this before, when we talk about these triangles, we'll talk about the angles or the, or the corners or the points as capital letters A, B, and C, and the sides aren't named accordingly. The side opposite angle A is lowercase a, the side opposite angle B is lowercase b, and, and, and so on. And that's what you do in a triangle. Okay, so we're going to construct that line there, and we're going to let the length of that line equal, let's call it h. So I'm kind of like a height. So I'm going to call that h for height. Now, I can now say two things, and we're going to we're actually talk about sine today, so let's think about the sine. I can now, I've now got myself in there, in the in this now, this, um, uh, what was one triangle, now cut the two right angle triangles. I've now got two things that I can identify as sign relationships. They're going to be two different sign relationships, but I've got two. Can anyone name one of them for me? A sign ratio relationship in one of those two triangles. The hypotenuse and the adjacent. Okay, so which, which, which triangle are we going to talk about? The First right one. one. So this one over here? Yeah. Okay, so a sign of what angle? B C. A. B. Uh, well, what are we trying to write? Hey, I'm just going to let's just let's just describe a sine ratio. We need tan and. Wouldn't it be sine B equals? Yeah, tan and cosine. Yeah, tan and cosine. Well, that's not necessarily half, is it? It looks like it might be, but you know, it might not be, and so we can't say that. What do we know though? In this triangle here, what sides have we labelled to some degree? H. And A. Mm -hmm. Alright, and so that's two sides. One of them is a hypotenuse, one of them is not, not a hypotenuse. What is the sine ratio that relates those two sides? Sine C is Sine of C, because what is sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite, so we're talking about this right angle triangle here. Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the opposite, on the other side. Yeah, okay, so what is it? Uh, H over C sine A. Right, can everyone say that too? Yeah. So on this left hand side, we've got this side here, and this side here, that's the that's the shorter side, that's our plot news. 
and that shorter side is opposite to this angle here. So sine of that angle is opposite of hypotenuse HFC. Sine of A is HFC. Everyone happy with those two statements? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I can rearrange these two. Let's say over here, I can rearrange this one to say, well, I want to say that H is equal to, and if I want to get H by itself, what do I do? Multiply both sides by A. A. Okay. A times sine C. What about getting H by itself here? Times C. C times sine A. Now I've got two things that equal H, and in our diagram, that's like we're talking about the same H, aren't we? This is the H here, and so both of those things we actually say are equal to each other. So therefore, A times sine C equals C times sine A. I could rearrange that a little bit and get a nice looking relation out of it. If I divide both sides by A and C, well we cancel that out and so that becomes sine C over C equals, cancel those out, sine A over A. That is the sine rule. We, now we could, have, we could have divided this triangle like this and we'll come up with two different angles then, sine B and sine C, we're going to divide like this, and again, the same, so it actually doesn't matter which way we, just, we divide it, we would have been able to do exactly the same process and just come up with the different ones, so it's like sine B over B equals sine A over A, instead of sine C. But what that means is that actually all three of those relationships are equal to each other. So I can now just put one rule on that side here, and go like sine B equals, sine B over B, equals sine A over A equals sine C over C. That is the sine rule. In any triangle, in any triangle, doesn't matter if it's right angle or not, sine of one angle divided by the opposite side is the same as sine of the next angle divided by the opposite side is the same as sine of the third angle divided by its opposite side. In any triangle. So, how can we use that? Can I write this down? Sure. So what I've just done there is proved I'm the sine the no. So that is the sine rule. I've just proved that. You may be asked to prove the sine rule in the assessment task. Assessment? That's, sorry? When's the assessment? Uh, like when we get to the end of your exam or that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So, so in, a, in some kind of assessment task, you may be asked to prove that. That's the process you go through. I'll draw it in a triangle, construct that line, go through those couple of steps using signs, and then say, so, well, therefore, that's what it is. Okay. But let's say we've got something like this. So I've now got there a triangle. It is not uh, a right angle triangle. And you know that because if I add those two together, what does that equal? 100. 100, so what's that one going to be? 80. 80. Okay, so it's not a right angle triangle. Okay. But I have got some angles, and I've got a side, and there's another side I need to figure out. So, how do we use our sine rule? We just set up an equation relating the two things we need, uh, the, the one thing we need to know with the rest of the information that we do know. So, this and this, opposite angle, opposite side. Okay, so they're the ones there. So we put them together in the same fraction. And so sine 45 degrees over x is equal to, well, the rate, relationship between these two opposite angle side. Uh, here together. So what sine 55 over 12? Okay, so how do we then work out what x is from there? We do math. 
certainly do. Times back by 12. And then okay, so you go 12 times sine 45 degrees equals x times sine 55 degrees. So I'm both, both on both sides by 12 and x. So I'm still going to get some of the x by itself, so how do I do that? So the one decimal place, 10.4, 10.3. So what's that? 10.4. So one more. Yeah. Okay. So some of you may, may recognise that if I actually written this the other way around, it would have been actually been easy to do. You can write the sides on top, all the angles on top, but as long as you are consistent in your the way you use it. So in this one, I could have actually started from the beginning and say x over sine 45 equals 12 over sine 55. And that's actually one of the easiest stuff.